Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we're going to start covering how to write compounds and name formulas. I know this seems like it's kind of way into the semester in order to start learning this, but it is really, you needed the background information to be able to understand it. So let's talk about systematic naming. There are too many compounds to remember the names of them all. Compounds, remember, are made of two or more elements, and you have to put together atoms. So the name should tell us how many and what type of atoms are involved. Remember, there are two types of compounds, molecular and ionic. In molecular compounds, they're made of molecules, they're made by joining nonmetal atoms together, and are sometimes hydrogen bonded. In ionic compounds, they're made of cations and anions or metals and nonmetals. The electrons lost by the cations are gained by the anions and they're transferred. The cations and anions surround each other and the smallest piece is called a formula unit. For most of the group A elements, location on the periodic table can tell what kind of ion they form. Elements in the same group have the similar properties, as you know from the periodicity lectures. Including the charge um, when they are ions, it's easy to tell based on the group number and the A. So charges in groups 1A, 2A, and 3A is basically just the group number as a positive. Charges in groups 5A, 6A, and 7A is the group number minus 8, so it's a negative. For the other elements, I'll cover more of those later. So let's take a look. If the charge is always the same, in other words, group A elements, then you just write the name of the metal. So for example, cobalt 2 plus is the cobalt 2 ion. Ag plus is the silver ion. Zinc 2 plus is the zinc ion. And Cd 2 plus is the cadmium ion. Most of the transition metals can have more than one type of charge and you will indicate the charge with the Roman numerals in the parentheses. That's why you see the parentheses 2 for the cobalt 2 ion. A few like silver, zinc, and cadmium, however, are transition metals, but they can only form one kind of ion, so they don't get Roman numerals. So let's name these cations. This would be the sodium ion, calcium ion, aluminum ion, iron 3 ion, iron 2 ion, lead 2 ion, and the lithium ion. So here's uh, the backwards version of that. So for the potassium ion we have K1+. Magnesium is Mg2+, copper 2 is Cu2+, chromium 6 is Cr6+, Barium ion is Ba2+, and the mercury 2 is Hg2+. When we have anions, um, these are always the same because you just change the element ending to ide. So F1, F1- is not the fluorine ion, it's the fluoride ion. So here's a couple of other ones. <clears throat> The first one is the chloride ion. Second one is a nitride ion. This one is the bromide ion. This one is the oxide ion. And then this one, remember it's a plus, so you use the name of the metal, so it's the gallium ion. Okay, here's some practice. So I want you to take a second, pause the lecture, and write out what you think they are. And then we'll go through them. Okay, hopefully you've done that. So this is the sulfide is S2 minus. Iodide, you know, is also a minus because it has the IDE. So that's I1 minus. Phosphide is the P3 minus. In strontium ion, remember, it's the name of the element, so that means that it's a cation, so it's SR2+. Some groups of atoms stay together as a unit and have a charge as the unit. 
these are covalently bonded and you have to memorize their, these. There's no way around it. It's straight memorization. A list is provided for you on the Moodle page for you to use in your study. It will not be provided for you on the exams, however, so you have to spend some time memorizing these ions. When you add hydrogen ions, remember hydrogen ions are a plus one charge. They attach to other polyatomic ions and change the charge by one. So if you have an SO4 two minus, you add a hydrogen, it becomes a one minus hydrogen sulfate. The phosphate ion, when you add one, it becomes a two minus and it's a hydrogen phosphate. And then you take hydrogen phosphate and add in another hydrogen, you get H2PO4 one minus dihydrogen phosphate which, by the way, goes into baking soda. Okay, we're going to change, change gears to ionic compounds. When we name binary ionic compounds, that means that they're made of two elements. Ionic compounds, as a reminder, are made of a cation bonded to an anion. And the name is just made up of the names of the ions. You say the cation first and the anion second. And this is easy with group A elements. So this would be sodium chloride, magnesium bromide, and sodium sulfide. The problem comes with the transition metals because the cation name includes the charge and the compound must be neutral, which means it has the same number of positive and negative charges. So you use the negative charge to find out the charge on the cation. So I would like you to practice on a sheet that goes with this lecture. You're welcome to submit it to me to review to make sure you are on the right track, or we can cover it during office hours. So here's a couple of examples. When we take copper oxide, and I have no idea whether it's a plus one, plus minus one, etc. at the moment. So we need to know the charge on the copper because it's a transition metal. We know that the oxide ion is a negative two. So the copper must be a two plus in order for them to balance out. So the name's going to be copper two oxide. So I want you to do these three down below and double check it uh, with me if you need to, but make sure that you have the, the charges balanced. With tertiary ionic compounds, um, they will have polyatomic ions involved. At least three elements must be involved for a tertiary ionic compound. You can tell if it's three elements by three capital letters or more. This is still just the same as the ions. So if you take the first one, it's sodium nitrate. The second is calcium sulfate. And the third is copper two sulfite, because we know that the sulfite ion has a minus two charge. So the charges, remember, have to add up to zero. You can get the charges on the pieces first. Cations from the name of the periodic table and anions from the periodic table or the polyatomic list. Anions uh, balance the charge with the cations by adding subscripts. And you put the polyatomics in parentheses if there's no, more than one of them. And so here's kind of the step-by-step -step method. But an easier method is the crisscross method. What you do is you switch the numerical values of the charges. So basically you just bring it down to the subscript. So you have barium ion and the nitride ion. Well, the barium has a two, the nitride has a three. So you crisscross them and you get Ba3N2. Then you reduce the ratio if it is possible because you want it to be the empirical unit. Remember to look for the following things. If the cations have a parentheses with a, a Roman numeral in it, the number is their charge, not how many there are. If the anions end in ide, then they are probably off the periodic table or monoatomic. If the anion ends in eight, or ite, it is polyatomic. The positive piece always gets written first, and hydrogen is special. It depends on where it's at. If it's first, it acts as a metal or cation. If it's second, it acts as a nonmetal or anion. Okay, we're going to pick up part two 
when we start with molecular compounds. I'll see you then.